When Disney's fourth theme park opened at Walt Disney World in 1998, it was supposed to be something different. Far and away from the princesses and princes of Magic Kingdom, the filmic backlot of MGM Studios, or the futuristic World Fair at Epcot, Animal Kingdom would focus on the planet and the animals that inhabit it, and its main focus would not be the rides or attractions that Disney had become known for. At least, not yet. For over 15 years, this roller coaster has thrilled families and scared children, but for 14 of those, one of the stars of the attraction has been in a state of constant disco. Join us as we look at the last non-intellectual property ride to come to Walt Disney World, a spiritual successor to the Matterhorn, on, uh, Expedition, Expedition Everest. In the shadows of Mount Everest, a train awaits. But be warned, those attempting to reach the summit must face him. Expedition Everest, a chilling new ride at Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner, and I am proud to join all the animals and characters in welcoming you to Disney's Animal Kingdom and Walt Disney World. When Animal Kingdom opened in 1998, it only offered two attractions that could be considered rides. The headliner attraction for the park, Kilimanjaro Safaris, was a big hit, which showcased animals from around the world on this brilliant experience. The other attraction truly did terrify the whole family and would be known as Countdown to Extinction. The dinosaur-based dark ride featured a similar vehicle and track layout to the Indiana Jones Adventure at Disneyland, which had opened in 1995. I'm Joe Rohde. I'm the executive designer of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, we are here on the site of Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I'm going to tell you today both what it is and what's going on with it at this point in time. Disney's Animal Kingdom is a park about our love of animals. Not just the live wild animals that we all know and love, but prehistoric creatures from times long past and animals out of realms of our own imagination. Disney wanted Animal Kingdom to stand out as more than just a zoo experience. But was there enough in the park for families to do and see to make them visit this new Disney level park and pay Disney level pricing when they could just see animals at a local zoo for a whole lot cheaper. There were no roller coasters or fun family thrill rides that Disney had become known for, and guests were unsure if there was enough to do outside of the shows. With the proposed Beastly Kingdom scrap due to budget constraints, Disney needed something else to really propel the park forward. Animal Kingdom had opened with a tease on the park map that more was coming, and it was currently under construction. And coming in early 1999, you'll visit yet another fascinating land with its own exciting adventures when you enter Asia. The Asia land was part of the Animal Kingdom from opening, though it was incomplete, and at opening, the land only featured the Flights of Wonder Bird Show. This was quickly followed up in 1999 with another much needed ride, the Cali River Rapids. It was a welcome addition in the often hot and humid park and a new thrill ride attraction that was not only fun, but educational. Asia was becoming a more complete land and the Animal Kingdom was ready to become not a zoo. Disney were adamant that Animal Kingdom offered more than just a zoo, even introducing a whole advertising campaign with a made up word. Disney's Animal Kingdom, it's many, many things, but remember it's not a zoo! A word that is really fun to say. Go ahead and try it. Not a zoo! Guests weren't so sure though, with annual attendance slumping each year after opening. The park still needed more, something to really propel it to the heights of the other Disney parks. Animal Kingdom added another show in Tarzan Rocks near to Dinoland USA, as well as its first roller coaster, a still spinning wild mouse coaster called Primeval World in 2002. You were rubbish, 
but I still miss you, Primeval. Even with these changes, it wasn't enough to entice the crowds away from its other parks. It was time for something big, something mysterious, something thrilling, a roller coaster that was up to Disney standards. Enter, once again, Joe Rohde. That's Walt Disney Imagineering's Joe Rohde. Joe's the visionary behind Expedition Everest and Animal Kingdom. Can you tell by the earring? This guy thinks outside the box. Sort of imagine bringing fins of rock strata that interrupted that horizontal weir. Joe really carries the creative vision. He's responsible for what our guests see at the end of the day. He's coming off of this giant mountain. All these glaciers are melting. You know, you gotta believe that this is a massive, ma okay, that's better. He and his team had taken a look at Tibetan and Nepalese culture and conceived the idea that as part of an expansion to Asia, the skyline could be dominated by the Himalaya mountains. Weaving in and out of those mountains could be a roller coaster. Using forced perspective, they could create a massive mountainscape that would change the park and its skyline forever. Disney was well known for their mountain-based rides with Space, Thunder, and Splash Mountain, all using the term. As well as this, the Matterhorn bobsleds at Disneyland have been using a forced perspective mountain since the 50s with an abominable snowman terrifying guests since the late 70s. Taking inspiration from all the mountains and monsters that had come before it, Joe Rohde and his team used clay mock-ups to design their own mountain and showcase the Asian version of the abominable snowman, the Yeti. The team tried many different versions of the mountain, using Everest as the backdrop. A mountain too big would be thrown off by the roller coaster entering and exiting it. They would use forced perspective to have Everest as a distant peak and design their own mountain in the foreground, a forbidden mountain. On this attraction called Expedition Everest, you are not on the Everest mountain. You are just trying to get there. Everest is represented behind the forbidden mountain using forced perspective to try and make it seem bigger and in the distance. The storyline was set. Guests would board the roller coaster as a scenic expedition trip through the Himalayas on a shortcut through the Forbidden Mountain attempting to reach Everest. The only problem, the Forbidden Mountain was supposedly under the protection of a Yeti. The name of this attraction? Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. The scale of this new project was enormous. One of the largest Walt Disney World had undertaken taking up six acres of land at the back of the Asia land. The new ride also came with a new pathway around Discovery River that connected to the back of Dinoland USA near the Tarzan Rocks Theater. The mountain itself would be 199.5 feet tall, just six inches taller than Tower of Terror at Hollywood Studios, making Expedition Everest the tallest attraction at Walt Disney World. It would be underneath the 200-foot aviation limit to avoid having a blinking red light on top of it. Built using 5,000 tons of structural steel and 10,000 tons of concrete, this mammoth mountain would be built surrounding the coaster track, designed using state-of-the-art computer modeling software. The mountain, the roller coaster, and the Yeti animatronic that would await you inside were all built independent of each other. There was just a few inches of room separating each structure individually attached to the ground. This would leave adequate room for the coaster to vibrate as it rolled past and not disturb the structure of the mountain, which is made from cement and rebar, and that would just crack. The outside of the mountain scaffolding would not get the job done. The solution was to let 2,000 interior support beams, or tabs, extend about five feet through the skin of the mountain to serve as attachment for planks. Workers stood on these planks to complete the rock work. After the work was done, all of the supports were cut away and the holes were filled in, a cleanup task that would take nearly three months. The roller coaster itself will be built using a new custom Vacoma ride system with over 4,400 feet of track, two lift hills, two track switches, a backward section, and an 80 foot drop out of the mountain, all with just a lap bar of strain. The final section on the roller coaster would fly past a 25 foot tall animatronic Yeti. This was an ambitious project and really showcased the large thrill based gap that Disney wanted to fill at Animal Kingdom. 
The ride had been in development for over three years before it was even officially announced to be coming to the park. At Animal Kingdom's 5th anniversary event on April 22nd, 2003, Walt Disney World President Al Weiss delivered the news to the media while he was surrounded by swirling snow. He stated that the newest and largest Disney mountain would surpass the thrills of all the others and give guests a reason to return to Animal Kingdom. A spine-tingling encounter. Rising nearly 200 feet into the clouds, Expedition Everest is a high-speed, pulse-pounding, state-of-the-art attraction into the Himalayan unknown. The ride was estimated to cost a then world record for a roller coaster of $100 million, which was only surpassed by Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure in 2019. With a further three years of construction after the announcement of the ride, the opening date was set for April 7th, 2006. The ride soft opened in the months leading up to the grand opening for cast members and annual pass holders. All the early reviews of the family thrill ride were glowing. The grand opening ceremony festivities were led by Disney chairman Bob Iger and parks chairman Jake Rizzullo. There was one other special offering for the opening ceremony. The mountain would feature wild cats. Yeah, the boys were back. Zac Efron and the rest of the high school musical cast members would get a celebratory ride, added smoke effects on the drop to mark the special occasion. They were definitely all in this one together. The coaster was flying so fast that day, nobody had time to ask, what time is it? As they let out a scream, the iconic attraction was the star of something new. That was fabulous giving them all a night to remember, as they would break free from the Forbidden Mountain. Okay, yeah, that's enough of that. I was tempted to try and do it with every High School Musical song, but figured it was time to get my head in the game. Guests leaving the ride may be forgiven for missing the storyline of the attraction, apart from it featuring a yeti. There are hints, however, all around of what awaits inside. Under the sign for the attraction, warnings prepare those for what lays ahead. Every aspect of the queue, attraction, and even the whole area is crafted with authentic details. The storyline is that you are in a fictional remote village of Circa Zong, in the kingdom of Anandapur, a place that is deeply integrated into the story of the Asia land at Animal Kingdom. Located in the hills of the Himalayas, the Royal Anandapur Tea Company used to use the Darjeeling Co. Rail to bring tea leaves down from the mountain. But after some unknown mishaps, this had been taken over by a company called Himalayan Escapes, run by Norbu and Bob. They have reclaimed many of the tea buildings and refurbished the tea trains to create Expedition Everest a trip that would take you to Everest Base Camp using a shortcut through the Forbidden Mountain. The buildings featured in this area have red throughout as the Himalayas would do this to ward off evil spirits. More than 900 bamboo plants, 10 species of trees, and over 100 species of shrubs were planted throughout the area to create the most authentic feeling possible. Even the totem poles were handcrafted by Nepalese craftsmen. Across the waterway sits a temple shrine that a photopass photographer usually is located. This was a gift from the locals with tributes of fruit and beads for the Yeti. If you stand in the right spot, this feature lines up exactly with the mountain's peaks across the waters. View the attraction from above and the shape forms a huge hidden mickey. Much of what was created for the attraction was inspired by real-world places found on research trips around the world, a tradition that had carried on from the creation of Animal Kingdom itself. The standby queue is incredibly detailed and starts with Norbu and Bob's booking office, to get your permits, of course. This was the formal quarters of the Royal Anandapur Tea Company. Next would be the Yeti Mandir, which is a small temple dedicated to the Yeti. After this, you would enter Tashi's Trek and Tongba's Shop of Circa Zong. They claim they provide the finest in mountaineering equipment for all needs, new and used. The former tea warehouse has been turned into a makeshift Yeti museum 
that documents the Yeti sightings and its significance in local culture. Here you will find details on the mystery of the lost expedition, an exhibit that mentions a 1982 lost expedition that disappeared in mysterious circumstances when attempting to reach Everest through the Forbidden Mountain Pass. Don't worry though, this definitely won't happen to you on your expedition. As you reach the station, the large 17-row, 34-seater steam train arrives. Sometimes steam billows from underneath the train, giving the effect that it was coming from the trains itself. Special vents were built into the station's track, one of which provides the steam effect for the train's smokestack. Five trains can run at a time on this nearly three-minute-long roller coaster expedition. The train leaves the station, departing for Everest Base Camp. It starts with a small lift hill providing your first glimpse of the Forbidden Mountains Peak, followed by a short drop leading to the 118-foot moving chain lift. This leads you through a destroyed temple with murals depicting the Yeti. As you descend through the mountain, it leads you to a destroyed dead-end track. The track preceding this area used to be covered in steam and fog, but this was removed shortly after opening. Surrounded by hair ties and a large eagle on a stick, who may or may not make an appearance, the first track switch occurs. The same track switch that Alton Towers said took too long, and they wanted to make faster with 13. They did use a faster one, but only Alton Towers would think that ride is anywhere near this good. Well, that ride was a bit timid. At least it's uh, time now to get off. Apparently, oh, oh, little jolt there. <laughs> okay, let's get up. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Riders are held for around 6 seconds by a series of tyres before plunging backwards into the dark of the mountain, offering up to 3 Gs in the dark backwards to the next switch track. Here we catch a glimpse of the legend and the projection of the Yeti rips up the track. Moving forward again, the train drops 80 feet out of the mountain, reaching speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. The ride then curves back into the mountain where the roar of the Yeti can be heard before heading outside one final time for a series of upward helixes, before dipping into the mountain into a cave where the mysterious beast awaits. The Yeti, the largest and most complex audio animatronic Disney World had built at the time, is 25 feet tall and can move 5 feet horizontally and 18 inches vertically. This Yeti is the single biggest dynamic figure that has ever been built. There is nothing that is this big that moves this fast in the world of animation. It's, it's really pretty cool. The Yeti would swipe at the train as it rolled by, offering a thrilling and scary finale with this incredibly detailed beast. You would then exit the mountain and come towards a separate unload station before heading into the gift shop, the Circa Zong Bazaar. This shop was said to be set up by local townsfolk and sells handmade items and Expedition Everest merchandise. The incredible Yeti animatronic was a brilliant ending to the ride and guests raved about how close the Yeti hand would get towards the ride vehicle and what a realistic experience it was. You know, if Yetis are actually real, which they definitely are. Joe Rohde said that extensive research was done into getting the audio animatronic as realistic as possible. Controlled by 19 actuators, the £20,000 complex animatronic required an extraordinary amount of force to move as riders flew by it for just a few seconds experience. The Yeti is supported by a structural beam connected to its back. This beam attaches to a vertically mounted actuator that gave the creature two feet of vertical motion. The vertical actuator, in turn, connects to a sled that moves 5 feet horizontally on metal ways to give the Yeti back and forth motion. To get the profile right, engineers had to use a control box built in the 1960s by Disney, specifically for electronic puppeteering. The Yeti skin is 1,000 square feet and held in place by 1,000 snaps and 250 zippers. Animating in 
traditional animation or film animation is you're just trying to get your shot right for the scene. With audio animatronics animation, we have to make sure it looks good from every angle because guests will be going through a three-dimensional space. How good the animatronic was and its effect has sadly turned into just as much as a legend as the real-life Yeti. Just a few short months after opening, issues started to arise with the animatronic. Rumours spread that the Yeti's framing had split and would cause catastrophic malfunctions if it had operated further. Access to repair the structure would require a lengthy and expensive closure. Disney did not want to close its brand new ride. The Yeti would now be found operating in B mode, where the figure was static but a strobe light and wind effect would simulate the effect of movement. It was simple, yet very effective and could often deceive guests that the figure was actually still moving. Over the years, many report they have seen the Yeti move in, and in the majority of cases, it is just this strobe light effect. In 2008, Disney World spokesperson Andrea Finger confirmed that the Yeti had presented some complex challenges, and they had taken measures to reduce unnecessary stress while a solution was found. It was quite unheard of for Disney to admit that there was a problem. There was even rumours that the Yeti was fully working in 2009, but the Yeti would now remain in B mode, dubbed Disco Yeti. Disney fans have been clamouring for the Yeti to return in its full glory for years now. Joe Rohde had stated that in the past, he and his team have been looking for a fix. At the 2013 D23 Expo, Rohde said, you have to understand, it's a giant, complicated machine sitting on top of like a 46-foot tall tower in the middle of a finished building. So, <laughs> it's really hard to fix, but we are working on it. Um, and we continue to work on it. Uh, we have tried several things. Uh, None of them quite get to the key turning of the 40-foot tower inside of a finished building, but we are working on it, and I personally, you know, kind of bulldog this one in a way that is, doesn't always make me popular, but I will fix the Yeti someday, I swear. Uh, <laughs> With no progress seen over the years, fans even continued to ask Rhodey whether the Yeti would ever be fixed. In 2020, he stated that they were still looking for a solution. With Joe Rohde retiring in 2021, the future may look bleak for the Yeti. As impressive as the Yeti was in A mode, with such a short amount of time spent flying past it on the ride, and guests still sure to this day that it does move, Disney may chalk this one up to a learning experience. On Expedition Everest, we, the guests, come to this Tibetan village that surrounds us because we want to get to Everest, which we can see right through the pass. There's these entrepreneurs in town, Norbu and Bob, they're ready to comply. However, Everest is reached through the Forbidden Mountains and all the local Tibetan people, they're freaked out and they don't want us to go. And they're worried about the Yeti, who they think is really real and they think he's going to get us. Joe's time at Disney may have come to an end, but he leaves behind a legacy of one of the best theme parks and one of the best attractions anywhere in the world. And it doesn't matter if the Yeti works or it doesn't. B-Mode does not really detract from the incredibly themed, immersive and story-driven roller coaster for me. With Expedition Everest, Disney wanted to change the perception of Animal Kingdom and bring guests flooding back to the theme park. A big, bold and scary family thrill ride that was just what the park needed to increase attendance, and it worked. Joe Rohde and his team of Imagineers had created a mountain that was eye-catching and fit into the Asia section of the park beautifully. Imaginary creatures were always planned to be a part of the Animal Kingdom experience, and while hinted at before, the Yeti on Forbidden Mountain would be the first. Disney had a hit on their hands, and would shift Animal Kingdom firmly into the Nata Zoo category on the theme park map, creating one of the best themed roller coasters not just at Disney World, but in the whole real world. Over 15 years later, Everest is still seen as many guests' favourite ride, not just at the park, but at the whole of the resort. It was the last major attraction built at Walt Disney World without an intellectual property attached to it. 
and in an era of original story based attractions that would be replaced with another kind of Walt Disney World attraction. Not necessarily worse, just different. One where people came to see experience they were already familiar with from the world of Disney movies, TV and more. Will there be another ride as big and expensive as Expedition Everest that is not based on a familiar intellectual property? Probably not Yeti. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Animal Kingdom. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. What do you think of the Disco Yeti? Does it need fixing? Let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel and a special thank you to Jackie from Super Enthused for helping film this video. Go and check out her channel for different vlogs all around the Orlando area. You might even catch me in them. We will see you next time. Jesus.